when we're running our businesses and we're breaking even, we're just covering expenses. There's no room for growth. There's no budget for growth. There's no budget for future team members that will come on. There's no bandwidth for the entrepreneur to do the innovation, to stay ahead of things with the marketplace and the changes that are happening. And that's really one of the things we hear a lot right now is entrepreneurs saying, I need time to think. I need to make a pivot, but I haven't even had the mental space to do that. So when we design for profit and design for sustainability, we're looking at how do we add margin, both money margin and time margin in for the business owner to have that bandwidth to make those decisions. And also having the money that builds up in the business so there is that cash cushion to get through challenging times. You work hard in your business. On the Profit by Design podcast, we ask the big question, what has your business done for you lately? Hi, I'm Dr. Sabrina Starling, the business psychologist, the author of How to Hire the Best, and your co-host on the Profit by Design podcast. Weekly, my co-host, Mike Bruno, and I bring you tips, tools, and strategies from our own experiences and from the experiences of our guests, who are entrepreneurial thought leaders and real-life entrepreneurs, all to support you in making intentionally profitable and sustainable business decisions to live the lifestyle you desire. At Tap the Potential, we know you're longing to be freed from the constant demands of your business. You need a business that supports your life. And the problem is your business is taking over your life, leaving you frustrated and discouraged. We get it. At Tap the Potential, we believe work supports life, not the other way around. We understand you're paying a team and most likely you're still having to do it all. There should be accountability. It should not be this hard, which is why through our proprietary coaching system, we help thousands of business owners like you have more time for what's important to them and grow profit by 300 to 800%. Here's how we do it. Start by taking our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. You'll get an overview of your current quality of life as it relates to your business and next steps needed in your business to improve your quality of life while strengthening your business. Next, meet with our success team lead to debrief your results. Then join our Better Business, Better Life program. By the end of your first year with us, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than you've ever had before. So if you're ready to take your life back, the next step is to take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Profit designers, at Tap the Potential, we are on a mission right now to be a positive force in social media during trying times for all of us entrepreneurs. In that regard, I would love it if you could help us out. We really want to get behind any of you who are doing good things in your communities, showing up and leading with love. If you are doing something to keep your team together during this time and you're sharing it in social media, or you come across another entrepreneur who is being a gift from their gift in some way that you notice, please use the hashtags lead with love and be a gift. Our team at Tap the Potential is on the lookout in social media for those hashtags, and we will be reposting those social media posts from the Tap the Potential social media. Let's all lead with love, be a gift, and shine bright during these trying times. Well, Mike, we're in 2021. Yes, we are. (laughs) We made it. Everybody finally made it. (laughs) <laughs> Yay. And today we're here to talk about designing for profit in 2021. This is a really popular episode. This is our third time to do this now on the podcast. We've been podcasting a long time now too, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> 
And each year we've talked about designing for profit and you were asking me some interesting questions as we were gearing up to record today's episode. You were just asking me more about, you know, what's the experience that we're seeing out there with business owners right now being impacted by COVID? Are we seeing people struggling? Which industries are having the most trouble? Which industries are doing really well? And so as we go into our conversation today and we talk about designing for profit, it's a very different scene than we had when we talked about this in 2020 and 2019. So I just want to acknowledge that you and I are going to take a little different angle as we go into it today. And for our profit designers, there is a workbook that accompanies this episode and the other three episodes in our strategic planning series. You can get that at tapthepotential.com forward slash plan. Tapthepotential.com forward slash plan plan. You'll want to have that workbook with you today because we're going to refer to a chart that's listed at the end of the workbook and you'll want to use that to look at your profit potential in your business as we talk about designing for profit in 2021. So Mike, as we kick this off, what's standing out to you in 2021 with respect to designing for profit? It's a really good question and I've pondered it quite a bit and you know, I know on the podcast before we've talked about break even to thrive and running a responsible company, being a responsible entrepreneur, you know, and through the, the last year, right, of uh, kind of this pandemic and things that are out of people's control, we've seen a lot of, you know, large companies go out of business because they, you know, when you take a step back and you think about it, so they really weren't a sustainable business model. Maybe they weren't so responsible if they were so, you know, stretched so thin. And of course, you know, don't, not taking away, you know, how dramatic this has been and, and the effects of, you know, basically this, this disaster, whatever you want to call it. But still, you know, I go back to that whole conversation we had about what it means to, you know, break even to thrive and responsible ways to run a business and responsible finances for a business and, and always keeping enough in the business to be able to weather some storms, but also when there is a storm, don't be afraid to make changes and change courses, right? And really be the captain of the ship instead of, you know, maybe taking the perfect storm movie approach and driving right into the wave, right? <laughs> you know, so there's, you know, I think that's one of the biggest things for me is just the realization that, you know, as an entrepreneur, despite my you know, habits of being the squirrel chaser and, you know, running all over the, you know, shiny object chaser and running all over the place and trying to, you know, take advantage of every opportunity. I really do have to be extremely responsible financially every day and really recognize, you know, decisions that I'm making can have effects down the road and there's unforeseen things that are going to come up. I think that's a really important point because the day-to-day -day decisions that we make have long-term ramifications. And when we talk about the survival trap that entrepreneurs get into where we make a decision to get through the short term, where you take on a project and you take it at a lower price point because you want to be competitive and you think, okay, well, that'll get me through this month. But what is the long-term impact of that one decision and 20 other decisions that are made like that one decision that can really be something that turns the business into something that's not sustainable? And I went back and I listened to, or I didn't listen to, I looked at the transcript from our Designing for Profit in 2020 and when we talked about it in 2019. And one of the points that we made that I think is, I repeatedly make this to clients and it's an eye-opening aha moment. When we're running our businesses and we're breaking even, we're just covering expenses. There's no room for growth. There's no budget for growth. There's no budget for future team members that will come on. There's no bandwidth for the entrepreneur to do the innovation, to stay ahead of things with the marketplace and the changes that are happening. And that's really one of the things we hear a lot right now is entrepreneurs saying, I need time to think. I need to make a pivot, but I haven't even had the mental space to do that. So, 
when we design for profit and design for sustainability, we're looking at how do we add margin, both money margin and time margin in for the business owner to have that bandwidth to make those decisions. And also having the money that builds up in the business so there is that cash cushion to get through challenging times. And, you know, prior to COVID, we're saying, you know, you want to have at least three months built up. And now what we've seen with COVID, we have some business owners looking to build a fortress and, you know, just having years worth or more of cash built up to weather through tough times. And so I think one of the things where we can be really helpful today is to create a buffet of things for entrepreneurs to think through and our profit designers to think through and think about, are these things that are important to me that I want to budget for and plan for and build the profit into the business so that it's there? Things like health insurance, life insurance, building a retirement for the entrepreneur, all of it, personal development, coaching, training. And, you know, one of the things that I think catches some of our clients by surprise is putting in a budget to train their team members to become leaders in the business. That is something that, you know, we think about what do we need as entrepreneurs to grow? If we want to have these businesses that are sustainable, we need team members who can also lead. And how do we train them? And how do we make that happen in the business? So when we think about breaking even to thrive, we get to pick, we, the entrepreneur, get to pick from this buffet of options. What are the pieces that are important to us that we want to be sure that we build in and create the margin for? Yeah, and that's a really good point, you know, just about... Yeah, uh, I know you talk to many clients and I've talked to clients about, you know, getting over the fact that the business deserves to make money. That's why you have a business, right? If you want a job for a paycheck, go get a job, be a responsible employee, not an irresponsible business owner, because not only does not charging enough impact you, your finances, your family, your future, your well-being, the stress, everything around it. You're also impacting the other people out there that are trying to price projects or services at a higher margin to be a little bit more responsible. And, you know, to your point, you know, when there's, you know, the whole, well, you know, woe is me. I have employees. They're no good. They're no that. Well, if you don't have money to train them, if you don't have money to hire the right people, if you don't have money to partake in programs like yours, right, where I have an ability to send my clients or my employee to a program to learn more about, you know, how to be a better employee and how to be part of an organization and culture and all of these things. You know, what else do I expect, right? If I'm not investing back into the business that way, in my people, in my, you know, services, et cetera, you know, it's really a detriment to the business. It doesn't work long-term, you know, people can hold on, you know, and I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day, and I used the analogy, not having enough profit in your business is no different than being an employee living paycheck to paycheck, right? I mean, you can't do that. There's no sustainability there. It's hard to grow. It's hard to do the right things to make the business healthier each and every day. Yeah. Profit is the number one thing that gets us off the entrepreneurial treadmill, finally, once and for all. Once we have profit in the business, we start sleeping better at night. And it's like we can kind of lift our head up and start looking around and say, oh, I have some mental space. I have some peace because I'm not worried about cash flow. And now I can look at what else do I want to do in this business? How do I want to make it better? And as you were talking, I got to thinking about the clients that we've had come through our Better Business, Better Life program. And sometimes they'll say to us, I have this money building up in my owner's pay account. I don't need it. I don't know what to do with it. it could, should I just reinvest it back into the business? And what's so surprising about that is these are business owners who have been living on so little paycheck. <laughs> such a little paycheck for so long, they've really scaled down their life around this tiny paycheck that they've been able to afford for themselves. And even a $10,000, $20,000 a year pay raise to them is just like, I don't really need that. And when we're talking about 50,000 more or 60 or close to, you know, maybe over a hundred thousand more, 
that's built up in their owner's pay account because they've implemented profit first and they don't know what to do. A lot of times it's because they really haven't thought about other needs, other long-term things that would help them to be more sustainable. So, you know, if you're listening to us and you don't have a retirement account in place, that is something to look at adding or life insurance, disability insurance, whatever it is that most people who work for larger corporations, those benefits that they have at those larger corporations, think about that for yourself as the business owner. What do I need to be better compensated in this business? That just hit something for me. And I'm politically ignorant. So this isn't about politics at all. But we had some friends over a couple months ago and we were, there was a very light discussion about politics and unemployment and, you know, the extra money that the government was giving up for unemployment. And I just, you know, again, had that realization that, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I am an entrepreneur and I could, I'm responsible for the money that I do make. But the flip side of that, there's been times of my entrepreneurial journey over the last 30 years, right? That things were really crappy and really slow and I couldn't collect unemployment. I'm a business owner, right? So to your point, you know, having that extra money, you know, whether it's rainy day fund or how many entrepreneurs are listening right now that don't have a 401k or maybe, you know, their spouse does, but they don't, but even what their spouse is putting in isn't equal to where they should be. You know, and at a certain age, I think there's catch up contributions that you could make or certain things that you can do. So, you know, that's another good thing to look at. And you also said disability insurance, you know, that's another big one, right? As an entrepreneur, if something happens and you can't work for a month or two or three, you know, where's that income coming from? You know, how do you make sure that you're not spiraling out of control or maybe you need to hire an outside coach or consultant or somebody to help you get through that period where you can't work for two or three months. You know, and I think this is a question for you, and I'm sure I asked it before because I I always, I know that I felt that sense of guilt when you raise the prices a little bit more and you know you're, you made that extra money on it and it feels real good, but there's a little bit of guilt there. You know, why is it that so many times we talk to entrepreneurs about raising prices, right? To get a professional rate in return, that there's guilt associated with it. And they almost feel like they shouldn't be able to make that much money. Like what's the barrier there? I don't get it. It's an internal dialogue and I really see it as kind of the challenge of experts. So I'll relate to it personally. I can get on a coaching call with a client now and 10, 15 minutes really zero in on here's the challenge. And I can ask the questions that kind of shine the light on some new possibilities and ways of handling it. I can do that in 15 minutes time. It's not hard for me. It's, and the reason I can do that is because I have spent 20 years <laughs> learning psychology, going through coach training, yada, yada, yada. You know, I've worked with hundreds, maybe thousands of clients to this point. I've lost count. And so things are easy. And it's that experience and that wisdom that comes some of us who are over a certain age, Mike, <laughs> that we benefit from, <laughs> not you, just speaking strictly on my part. And so in our mind, we downplay that. And we say, well, this didn't require much for me. It wasn't hard. I can't bill a lot for that. And so we totally discount everything that we have done to become that level of expert, to create that value. And so we price based on how much time and effort it took from us versus the value that is delivered for our clients and customers. And so one of the things that I really, really love taking our clients through in the Better Business, Better Life program is identifying the business sweet spot and looking at how to innovate around the sweet spot. And so when we start talking to our clients and we tell them, you know, you really need more margin so that you can pay yourself, so you can hire a team, so you can attract better quality clients. And then they throw up the price objection. I don't want to charge more. I feel bad about it. I feel like I'm gouging my clients. I don't want to gouge my clients. When we come at it from, okay, you're going to increase your prices by 15% and it's your price is now this amount. What are all the pieces of value that you can add in based on your strengths and your team's strengths that 
increase the value for your client that do not necessarily cost you more. They may cost a little, but they don't cost a lot more, but that deliver significant value. And when our clients start brainstorming that and they see like, there's all kinds of things we could be doing that we're not doing because we don't have the time to do those things. And then I say, why don't you have the time to do those things? Well, we have this client over here that we're serving in this, and they're not in the sweet spot. They're the clients that drain the energy from the business. And so when those clients can be declined, when you can say, you know, we're not going to take on that client, or we're going to gently transition that client out of here so that we have more time and bandwidth to focus on our top clients to deliver more value so that we can charge more. Now that starts to create the bandwidth for the entrepreneur and for the experience of, wow, I'm delivering all this value. In the previous episode, when I talked about visioning in this third part of the series, I asked the question, what is it that you want to hear your top clients saying about their experience with your company and what you're delivering for them? So if we can grasp onto that and think about it, tap the potential, I want to hear our clients saying, I took a four week vacation. This is freaking amazing. I never thought, you know, in 18 months time that you could get me from where I was to over here. And then I start thinking about, well, what are all the things that we can do at tap the potential that support someone to getting to that point? Those are the value adds that we're putting in. And every one of us in business has that opportunity when we really design around the sweet spot of the business to create that margin that allows us to break even to thrive. Yeah, that's so true. And when you were saying that, I got mentally transported back to a time, I think it was in like the late 90s, where I was starting the transition from you know, being the guy in the field with maybe a helper to more of an employee-based company. And I remember not even at that point thinking about or understanding what value really meant, but justifying my pricing to clients by saying to them, because I had to increase the pricing, right? So I would go in there almost an aggressive way and say, you know, well, we pay taxes for our guys and we have insurance and we have health insurance, right? So I'm justifying some of the price increase based on just things that are not value. You know, the value, the clients are not seeing value by me saying, well, I pay guys on the books and I pay taxes and insurance, right? But, you know, that's a lot of the missteps with entrepreneurs is that they start out in the trenches and whatever business they're in, they justify the cost at that time because maybe it's more than a paycheck or, you know, they're making a little bit more than they would if they were working for somebody. Then they start to transition to employees and building a larger company, but they fail to see that a larger company requires more financial resources and deserves to be profitable. You know, like you're in business, you deserve to make money. You deserve to be profitable. You know, you as the owner and, the, you know, your employees deserve to be paid well. Your clients deserve to be treated right. You know, and all those things cost money. Now they, and one of the things also, as you were saying that, and it's, it annoys me tremendously to this day, you know, right now I'm operating in the commercial contracting world and, you know, we list out all of the prices for the job, you know, or, or all the line items for what the things cost. And at the very end, we have a fee, right? So that's our exposed profit, right? And this is industry standard. The fee, what do you think the fee is? I don't know. We're talking, you know, companies that are, you know, multi-state, you know, some of our competitors are very large companies, they're nationwide, you know, so, I mean, what do you think the fee is? Several thousand dollars? Well, so, so in terms of percentage, right? So the fee average is somewhere between four and 6%, right? So on our bid form, we're basically putting on there that, our profit for the job is four to 6%. You can't live on four to 6%, right? So it's almost like here you are in an industry where everybody knows that you're not profitable on the four to 6%. So you have to be making money on the other line items and the other things that are included in the cost of the job. But it's almost as if as an industry standard, people are embarrassed to put the profit on the sheet that you actually need to make to have a sustainable company. 
right? You can't be a nationwide company or a company that has an office in a major city with hundreds of employees surviving on 4% or 5%. It doesn't exist, right? So, you know, even that, you know, in an industry that's so large and how people are operating, you know, there's almost like an embarrassment or this fear of actually showing, well, I'm making 20% or I'm making 18%, right? And exposing that. So, you know, it is interesting, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, my advice and the advice that I give myself every single day is I'm not doing this for practice. I'm a professional. I stand behind what I do. My value is in the client experience, the quality of the product or project or whatever we're doing for somebody. And I deserve to make money doing it. If I don't, and if I can't make that money, I'll sit home before I practice. Well, and what you just described is profit shame. Yeah. And it's rampant in the entrepreneurial community, especially in the construction industry, which you're pointing out, but across all industries, feeling shame because we're profitable. And you and I are on a mission here to end profit shame. There is no shame in being profitable. And so for those of you who are listening and you're thinking, well, I really would like to know what kind of percentage I should be looking at in my business. I want to refer you to the profit first target allocation percentages, which we've compiled for you in our strategic planning workbook. It's near the end. There's a chart that will show you and you can get this workbook at tapthepotential.com forward slash plan. You can download it, but the chart will show you based on the revenue of your business, what a healthy business in your revenue range doesn't, regardless of industry in your revenue range should be targeting for profit and for owner's compensation. And I will tell you that for profit, it's usually 10, 15, sometimes 20% based on the revenue level. Owner's compensation is anywhere from 35 to 50 percent of the real revenue of the business. So you want to take out cost of goods sold, materials, costs like that, and get down to what's the real revenue of your business. And then you could see it, what the profit potential is in the business. And it's eye-opening, especially if you've been running your business on very, very slim margins to look at wow, I really should be being able to pay myself a six figure, well over a six figure income, whether it's through salary or through distributions over time. And to really recognize that is because of the entrepreneurial risk that you bear, because you said it, Mike, employees don't lay awake at night worrying about cash flow. The entrepreneur does. The entrepreneur is the one who's taking on all the risk, who, you know, has the team members and the other people that they're responsible for, who has the liability. Profit is the compensation for that. And then the other side of it is that as the owner, if you're working in the company, you're working as a team member. So you need to be compensated for that as well. So there's two ways that you're compensated as the entrepreneur for the risk that you bear and for the work that you do in the company. And the other thing that's very illuminating about that chart that shows the target allocation percentages is the operating expense. And so you can see very quickly where there is a bleed. If your operating expenses are too high and there's a bleed and you're not able to pay yourself the profit or the owner's pay because of that, What that is really your business talking to you and saying, you don't have enough margin built into how you're pricing to be able to have a break even to thrive. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's really powerful stuff. And I hope, you know, our listeners that, you know, are, you know, really making good profit and they're killing it, continue to do so. And, you know, others that have been fighting that struggle for some time to just really establish, you know, go to the worksheet you know, run your numbers through it, have that, you know, eye-opening moment, and maybe it doesn't look so good or it seems frightening, you know, but take the baby steps to get there and really craft, you know, what your whole budget is and your investment back in the company and your people, your employees, yourself, your improvement, and really putting some away for that rainy day fund. I mean, it's, I think we've all seen, you know, that we're not in control as, maybe not as in control as we think we are all are sometimes, you know, and having that backup is really key. 
Yeah. And I also, I want to say too, for those who really sit down and look at what would it cost me to run this business on the break, even to thrive from that standpoint, what would be needed? And if it's an eye opening moment and it's a huge number and you think, Oh my gosh, I don't know how we could ever do that. Do that exercise that I suggested, which we take our clients through in the better business, better life program. And that's that brainstorming of if I'm going to add value for my top clients and I have the time and the bandwidth and my team has the time and the bandwidth to do it. What could we be doing for our top clients that would make them see tremendous value in what we're delivering for them and that our what we're charging would be just a blink of an eye to them. They would be like, ah, that's no big deal because look at this value that we're getting on the other side of it. So if it's an eye opening moment, use that as a challenge and an opportunity to really start brainstorming as to what is possible. How could you start designing your business so that you do have those margins there? Yeah, absolutely. And I know we have to wrap up. So real quick, you know, one other key thing to look at, and you and I talked about this before we started recording and and you brought it up is that, you know, now's a good time to make some of those changes and kind of use this as, you know, the catalyst for, you know, maybe, increasing staff in certain areas, reducing staff, reducing expenses, you know, making, you know, look at the business and rearrange it the way that you need to rearrange it to break even, to thrive and to be profitable in 2021 and in years to come. Yep. Let this be an opportunity where you say, this is how I want it to be. And I'm going to design it this way going forward. So step out from behind the bus and get in front and start driving and recognize that as entrepreneurs, we are creative and we are masters at identifying problems and finding solutions. So allow yourself that opportunity to do it for yourself and say, I need this margin in the business. What are we going to do? to be able to charge what we need to charge to have this margin so that we have a sustainably profitable business that lets us live the lifestyle we desire. And that profit designers is what we are here on the podcast to continue supporting you with every week. So tune back in next week and we will have more discussion about designing your business to be sustainably profitable. And again, if you have not downloaded our workbook yet, For the strategic planning series, go to tapthepotential.com forward slash plan. And we have all the tools there for you that we've talked about in the last four episodes. It's great to have you back, Mike. Great to be back. Have a safe and healthy 2021. And I wish everybody a profitable year. Yes. See you later. If your business is taking over your life and you're ready to take your life back, Tap the Potential's Better Business, Better Life program could be just what you're looking for. By the end of your first year in our program, you will have more time for what matters to you and more money in your bank account than ever. Get started. Take our assessment at tapthepotential.com forward slash assessment. Thank you for spending time with us today. Join our conversation in the Profit by Design podcast Facebook group. Share your thoughts on today's episode, ask us questions, and let us know what you want to hear about next. Visit our website at ProfitByDesignPodcast.com to access resources from our sponsors and tools we've created for you. Subscribe to the show on whatever platform you're listening to right now. There's a subscribe button right there. Go ahead and hit it so that you always get a notification when we release a new episode. And finally, share our podcast with a friend if you know a friend who would enjoy it. Thanks again for listening. This is real life business. Keep your chin up. Keep moving forward. You got this.